Hi, I'm James Just, and this is Libertarian Counterpoint. With me today is Jason Quintero, chairman out of Solano County Libertarian Party, and Michael Warnkin, a libertarian activist. Thank Michael, you. let's start with you. Uh, is there a better way to organize California? Uh, yeah, there absolutely is. Um, uh, I guess uh, there was an article written about an effort that I'm working on in Reason uh, magazine last uh, month. Uh, actually, it's this month. And um, we have a lawsuit right now. It's called Citizens for Fair Representation versus Padilla. Uh, a number of uh, cities and, and various individuals, including an Indian tribe, uh, have brought a lawsuit challenging California's apportionment. Basically, uh, we have 40 senators and 80 assemblymen, and if anybody's watching the census, we have about 40 million people, which means each assemblyman has 500,000 people and each senator has 1 million. Uh, in 1850, California became a state. There were about 90,000 people. There were 16 senators and 36 assemblymen. So each senator had 6,000 people and each assemblyman 2,500 people. So the assembly districts in California went from 2,500 to 500,000. And the Senate seats went from 6,000 to a million. So basically on agency, the issue is agency. Can one person represent a million people as a state senator? And on the second side, the lower chamber, which is supposed to be the House of Commons, can one of those guys represent 500,000? Uh, we said no. And, and I think we've talked in other episodes about problems like PG&E. And, and, and basically, the reason these monsters exist is because we have 40 and 80. And, and, and unless we increase the number of representatives, make the district smaller, make the reps have better access to us, give our vote more strength, unless all those things happen by increasing representation, uh, the problems that we're, uh, that we're experiencing right now will be worse than you can imagine. So uh, our lawsuit was to challenge 40 and 80, and, uh, and particularly in this article, we, uh, we hired uh, former Chief Justice of the Ninth Circuit, Alex Kaczynski, to be uh, one of the lawyers arguing our case. So that was a big deal. Well, I, I, get, I get a question about that. So if we have more senators, more politicians, which creates more staff, more work, more money, is it going to be effective? Will these people be represented or are we just wasting more money? That's okay, so, so uh, as it stands right now, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna shoot from the hip. I think the last I saw, it's probably bigger, we have 2,102 staff members, of which 1,400 go to the assembly and 700 go to the Senate. Uh, if we increase in the number of reps, uh, they'll end up taking on smaller staffs. Uh, in New Hampshire, okay. Uh, in New Hampshire, they have 400 reps for 1.2 million people, so each uh, lower chamber member has about 3,000 people on average. Uh, they have staff, but their staff is one person per committee. So when the legislature is not in session, uh, the, uh, each committee, whether it's judiciary, there's a uh, Washington, D.C., New Hampshire Relations Committee, uh, Water Board Committee, all these things, uh, when they're out of session, there's one staffer, whereas here, you know, an army of staffers, and, and, and you don't vote for the staffers. In fact, I often argue, you know, like, so when you see John Garamendi, who's our, our congressman, right. when he's debating somebody, you know, uh, uh, you know, whoever's running against him, you know, the question is, well, John, what's your stance on this? And then you say the opponent. And the real question you should ask is, who are you going to hire? Because these staffers are making decisions that you wouldn't even, you know. So, so you know, staffers, and, and if I ask you, you know, I said, so if you wanted to talk to your rep, you know, your local assemblyman, who should you talk to, a rep or a staffer? You know, and then I'm going to ask you the next question, PG&E. Do you think that they want to talk to the rep or the staffer? Well, they get the rep. They get the rep. So my question is, if this is a real democratic system, should you get the rep just as a common citizen? It would be nice. Yeah, I, I think most of us think that. So what, are, what we're basically arguing, and uh, our webpage is soj51.com, uh, and, uh, and uh, come and you can check it out. But we're challenging 40 and 80. And, and it, what's interesting is the attorney general is fighting us and saying, well, you know, we should keep it the way it is because well, yeah. they obviously like things the way they are. Uh, but and what's funny is when we, when we go to court, no one shows up with him. He's all by himself. So, it's the, oh. so everybody's secretly sure. cheerleading against us, but, but no one's going to court to say who is. So. Anyway, so that's yeah. So, so the question you asked is, can California be uh, organized better? Absolutely. I'm sorry. One man cannot represent a million people, and another man cannot represent 500,000 and do what they're supposed to do and and uh, and take care of us. Well, I know I've had an absolute impossible time getting any of my local elected representatives to even talk to me. And you know, if, as either the vice chair of the county, or as a, you know, a gig worker, you know, whatever the issue is, they won't even talk to me. Yeah. So. You know, if, if you're lucky, you get some staffer sends you uh, some something, some some back. Well, thank you for reaching out to us yeah. gives you, and gives you some yeah. some kind of 
boilerplate thing uh, explanation that doesn't even actually answer the question you sent them. <laughs> so, so, and, and so what you're basically bringing up is local government. So, I mean, so it's government code 25,000 A says every county shall have five supervisors. So the smallest county in California is Alpine, population 800, five supervisors. LA County, somewhere between 10 and 12 million, five supervisors. So the question is, can five Good people point. represent 800? I'm willing to go with it. Can they represent 10 million? No way in hell. You know, and, and, and I, think, I think that's fair for us to say. And so when you're saying that, you know, because, because the theory is our vote is the currency to protect our civil and, and political uh, rights. And what you're saying is, you know, you're going to these people and you're petitioning. You say, I got a problem. And you're saying the staffers are kind of ignoring you. Well, that means we don't have enough reps. It means the districts aren't big enough, or aren't small enough. And it means that, you know, technically we're in an oligarchy. I guess, I guess you know, go American government's an oligarchy. And, and until you increase representation really at all levels, you know, the districts get smaller. It's less expensive to run. You know, the people can't be bought off by, you know, these big intrinsic groups who then in turn, you know, press the heck out of us. And guess what? That happens in, you know, in, 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 in lives. So, you know, and, and so what I'm, I'm basically saying is an increase in representation, it'll make it so liberal. Libertarians have a better chance of running and winning. So, so if you're going to be the head of a party, you can all of a sudden, you know, not just fight for what you got and advance your view, but also get people to run for office and, and have a shot to, you know, once you're at the table, then you matter. Because as of right now, right. as of right now, matter. there's that's one. actually a good point. As as a libertarian <clears throat> potential candidate, you know, is is it you have to get 500,000 people? Well, that's different than if you have to market yourself to 100,000 people. That's actually a vastly different game. Yeah. Or if you have to market yourself to 50,000 yeah. people, those are vastly different games. And so there is, there is, you know, there's something to it. I, we should at least consider it. I think it was due consideration to everybody to kind of look into this and see. Okay, maybe we do need to reconsider a, a major restructuring of how we do yeah. governments of California. Right. And, uh, and I gotta say. At, at first, I was against this because I thought more government, more government, more staff, more, more politicians, more, more, and more. But hearing you talk, Michael, I think I'm going to check out the website and think more about it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Good. Yeah. Well, when we talk about uh, government representation, there was a recent survey here in Sacramento County about support for a Sacramento transportation tax, and. My question is, did they cook the survey? I don't know if you guys got a chance to look at it. Is the, the, for me, they cooked the survey a little bit, but even with the survey cooked, it still doesn't show support for the type of activities the city of Sacramento is taking. Sacramento is essentially going on the road diets. They're removing lanes and, and putting, in, putting in bicycle lanes, and my bicycle lanes are actually the lowest supported well, I, I think you know we were talking about you know uh, you know some time before when we were here you know one government doing anything which you know I mean you get what you pay for again when you you know you can choose where you get your car washed versus you know you know what you buy in a store but but when you have a monopoly you know on on who does it then you know you get you get what you pay for and and I think what's what's uh, traditionally happened unfortunately in California is one of the best ways and I'll just say it you know can we say it you know say it government steals okay so one of the best places to steal is the roads so what do they do they'll go out and they'll, uh, they'll they'll neglect from the general fund they won't pay for the roads right and then they'll say okay we got too many holes we need to do a bond issue and then they'll transfer the money that they would have spent on the roads elsewhere right yeah so roads so, puppies and children yeah yeah we, we saw just Newsom just do that there, recently, right yeah right? we saw Newsom do that recently he just signed over a bunch of a bunch of money to go to environmental projects rather than the road projects. And he says, but I'm not spending the money that you gave us. You gave us extra money because you said we didn't have enough. So we, so they passed the tax increase to give yeah. them more money. And then they took the money that they originally had and said, oh, now we, can, now we can spend this on something else. Yeah, misappropriation, basically. Yeah. And yeah. the voters keep voting And yes. they keep voting men. And <laughs> well, keep voting yes. the, the only thing I'm going to say about that is, and this is, this is something, and I got into a lot of, I got into a little bit of heat saying it one time, so I'll, I need to say it again, say right? It. Okay, so, so when you have these huge districts with the poor representation uh, we have, the average voter stops participating. You know, obviously, you know, the, uh, the person running for office, the bigger the district, cannot go to everybody's door. Oh. So what does he have to do? He goes to the big, powerful people, right? And what ends up happening uh, from there is uh, 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 only certain people have access. And, and, uh, and what I've started to find, and I mean, this is the big, dirty secret, is you know who the only people who tend to vote are? Government employees. And they got angry at me for even floating mm -hmm. that. So, so it's mm -hmm. it, and what do they worry about? Salaries and retirements, right? Of course. And they don't really care where it comes from. They don't really care how the politicians get it as long as they do. So as long as you and they will vote. You know, the, the the average person doesn't know there's an election going on, much less who's running in it, especially with these huge districts. 
but the people who are working for government, they know and they and they and they and they and they follow up. So well, and in this survey, they can kind of cook support. Yeah. In this particular survey, they created they created uh, three positive responses, one negative response, and one neutral response. They got a very favorable, favorable, and somewhat favorable with unfavorable and don't know. So but in, in that particular scale, somewhat, unf somewhat favorable is literally less than favorable. So, and then they included the somewhat favorable as in part of the favorability score. So, so this goes back to nothing lies like statistics, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, and, and, and the city of Sacramento does it before. They've got, they're doing this new road diet thing down here in my neighborhood where they want to take a four-lane road, make it into two, and put in bike lanes and all, yeah. this, all, all this other kind well, of, see, you know kind of things. But the what they did was they went to farmers markets yeah. and, and and these kind of places to get the to get the community input. Their consensus, right? Yeah, yeah but they, they manufacture con consensus, and I, and right. I think and I've yeah. run into this in Southern California, and you may notice this around here. Have you noticed how there's a lot of roundabouts popping up? Yeah. What roundabouts are, and 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 a lot of these other things is that there are federal uh, tags for these things. So if we put them in, and it's not just that you get money for it, but you net out far more money for putting them in, even if it costs a, uh, even if it causes a massive problem, they will work to put it in because maybe the cost of the project's five hundred thousand, but they're going to get a million for it. And the, and and so so these things are driven by uh, by cash receipts and not by what I would call general consensus. And and what mm -hmm. you're talking about is manufacturing consensus. So yeah. We're going to put in bike lanes, and, and people are like, oh, wow, bike lanes, right? Without asking, without knowing where it's going to go in, without knowing how it's going to be paid for. Yeah. Well, on these roundabouts, the ones they put around here, I don't even call them roundabouts. They're just islands in the middle of an intersection. Yeah. Yeah. They're not a real roundabout. Speed bumps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're not even a real round. If a real roundabout actually works. But these things are just, they just take a regular intersection, stick a round thing in the middle of it, and call it a roundabout. Yeah, no, this is <laughs> this is a permanent fixture now for a one-time expenditure that got you more money than it cost, and you didn't really give a darn what happened afterwards. Yeah, and well, you put, and, and it makes actually things different because it puts a visual thing, so you can't actually see if there's yeah. a pedestrian on the other side, and you're mm -hmm. closer, it squishes cars and pedestrians closer yeah. together at the intersection. In, in one community that I was at, and I mean, this was just bizarre, but I mean, they, they, where they shoved one in, uh, they more or less showed that you know, more people got hurt because the fire department couldn't get there. And, and I sat in a city council meeting and they had the guy sit right there and, and he did everything he could to kind of suggest that, no, it doesn't slow us down. <clears throat> and, I, and I grilled him. I said, I can't even believe you're, even, you're sitting here saying that because I know it's not true. You know it's not true. In fact, everybody in the room knows it's not true. And yet, you know, and yet it's the dollars. It's the cheddar, right? I mean, we got to... Right. right. Yeah. Yeah, but those those federal dollars come from us. Yeah. We actually have to pay the money. <laughs> right. We have to pay the All money right. so they can give some of it back to us and then and they want credit for it. They're angry with you for thinking that. <laughs> well, speaking of angry, NBC News employees have started to organize an anti-union effort. We were talking about unions and voting. So this is I just found it surprising that a bunch of people at NBC have actually started to organize an anti-union effort because I and I actually couldn't understand the reasoning why. Well, I think uh, a couple years ago. I'm glad he knows that or not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll let me take a stab at this. Uh, a couple of years ago, um, uh, there was a lawsuit that hit the U.S. Supreme Court, and, and uh, what had happened is when Scalia passed away, it went 4 4 and it didn't pass. Mm. But it was a challenge basically saying that if you uh, went to work for a shop, whatever that shop is, be it you know, a teacher's union or a you know or auto workers or whatever that you had to you mean you had no choice but to pay the dues to the union even if they were advocating things that you didn't want if you wanted that job you were forced to and finally the supreme court reversed on that uh when when uh, i think it was uh gorsuch was uh um, appointed and again it was five four and they, and they said enough it, it came to an end and so what's going to happen is you have all these unions that are still in place and and there's probably a number of people that that probably don't want to you know be part of them any longer and I think that's uh, um, an anti-union. Uh, yeah, I mean, because you usually hear, no, it's going to be, no, we want to unionize, right? And, right. Um, well, but then, then you're part of a pack of people that you might not want to be part of, and, and uh, you know, you find yourself as the one red guy in a yellow uh, yeah. it, or in a blue. Uh, if, yeah. your, if your union fails you, yes. well, good on you for leading the anti-union effort. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's the problem is these aren't my grandpa's unions. My grandpa's unions worked for, you know, the unions actually trained the people, and if they had a problem employee, the union took care of that problem employee. They got the union out, that, that problem employee out of there. It wasn't, and so nowadays, the unions, are this, is this actually kind of thing responsible of the unions? Are the unions their own fault? You know, has their politic, politic, politicalization of the unions 
creating this type of thing. Absolutely. And I've heard from many people from different unions say they don't represent me. Yeah. They're forcing me yes. to give them money. The union bosses are making more money than I am. Yeah. And they don't represent me politically or they don't help me at work. Yeah. And, and uh, one of my biggest concerns is the teachers union. I hear this all the time that teachers don't get enough. I have teachers complain about how they don't have pens and pencils and all that. But it seems like the union members are doing fine. It seems like the higher ups are doing fine. So, what's the union doing for the teachers? Well, the, the, you know? there's a big distinction also. So, this is NBC News. I mean, I guess in theory, it's a private enterprise. Um, right. The, uh, yeah. Unions that are on government, you know, government unions. So, you know, like you say, a teachers' union. It's uh, different distortion, different effects than private unions. And there are far, far more um, government unions this day and age than there are, uh, you know, I guess, you know, public unions. And and uh, they don't have the power. Right, but I'm curious, is the private union, NBC union, are they representing the people? I would like some more information yeah, to hear yeah. from those people. Yeah. Are they being represented? Really? Well, I think yeah, apparently but, but, not. But, yeah. but but I think you know, like I say, the, the you know the article says you know says it all. I mean, there's an anti you know, so there's you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and you know, and before this decision, you couldn't even suggest such things, you know, or you know, if you if you know, because it used to be that they had a union and they had a right to force everybody to do it. And and if there's an anti-union effort, what they're basically saying is that you know, this isn't working. You know, right. and we and, and and individually, you may need to negotiate rather than as a group. So. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah. As we, there's some question why where California is teetering towards recession. Well, if voters finally actually start demanding better policies or better politicians, I suppose is the better question. Uh, Jason, you want to take? Well, this one? I say the the great equalizer is social media. I really believe that. I think the media, the general media, uh, is lying to us all the time. We hear about fake news. Fake, fake news is a real deal thing. Yeah. And as long as the Democrats in California control the news. Yeah. The, uh, people keep voting for the Democrats, but with social media, you know, there's you can see a wide array of oh, opinions yeah. on uh, social media. Yeah, truth. But it's not all liberal. It's not all Democrat. It's libertarian. It's Republican. It's wide groups. And this is where I get better information. And I hate to say that, you know, yeah. I get my information from Twitter or Facebook yeah, or whatever. Yeah, no, no. But at least I can talk back and have yeah. some questions. Yeah. I can't ask KCRA or my yeah. local CBS, NBC station because yeah. I know where they're at. Well, and even then, when you see the news, I mean, it's the it's the personality, whoever it is, you know, and I'm mm -hmm. talking, you know, Dirk Verdorn or they're pretty or, or Golster, or whatever. But but yeah. as they look at the TV, as the camera, as we are here, they've got a teleprompter. Right off to the side, right. so they're being told exactly, and they're just you know reading. It, whereas you know we're you know what do you think of this? You know, exactly. Exactly. we don't have a telephone. Yeah, there's no telephone. <laughs> what do you think? And it's like you know, right? And and, uh, and so and and part of the you know part of the article which says you know as we teeter towards recession, uh, there is obviously a big problem. I mean, you know that 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 big article that came out that uh, it costs you three times as much money to get a U-Haul to go out of the Bay Area as it is to take right. you know you know right. so so there's obviously an exodus of sorts going on you know it's been my argument for a few years that that uh, California with you know all the pensions that we have all the payouts and all the transferences we're creating our own form of inflation and even the people who are well you know taken care of by that are still saying you know it's uh, what do they say in ac economics is that you know it's the choice you know well maybe we should go over to Nevada right you know and and, and you know then once you're I'm there yeah I and mean, once you're you know, you, I'm, I'm because the cost is, is lower you know you, you know you don't have the garbage and and, and uh, right. You know, and, and so, you know, I, I, I do believe that, you know, you know, there is, you know, we might form our own recession. And, I, 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 you know, the, the government is wanting to raise taxes and they're, and they're inattentive yeah. to our needs. But will the voters finally demand better policies? Now they listen to the same media they have for the last 20 years. I think, I think the greater chance is that we go broke as a state. It's interesting because Puerto Rico filed for bankruptcy a couple years ago. Uh, and, and the Supreme Court said, yeah, you can't, and the statute said you can't. Well, California can't, but it doesn't mean they're going to stop spending because everybody who's got their hand out, you know, who are, you know, the big, you know, the unions, you know, and all the, you know, the big mouths to speak, so to speak, they're not going to say, well, let's all cut it out, you know, let's slow down, right? You know, they'll say, well, give us ours, but, you know, and then when it gets really, I, I, I just, I don't think it will. I don't think it will. I think, I think this is a crash and burn situation. Well, <laughs> just this week, we passed a lot more taxes. A lot more taxes came effective, you know, in the last week or so from January 1st. So, you know, eventually the average person is going to stop being able to pay them. We're, yeah. just, we're not going to be able to live. You know, it's getting harder and harder for just the average person to, to manage to live. And that's when recessions start to happen is because when you cut the bottom out, eventually yeah. the top falls. 
So, but as we talk about um, media, the New York Times recently declared a California homeless camp in Oakland one of the most dire places in the world. And so we're talking about demanding better policies. I mean, shouldn't we be demanding better policies? Shouldn't we have already demanded these kind of policies? Well, I, I think so. Well, well, what's the policy? What's the policy that we're going to demand? Because what I hear is that um, we have to build $400,000 condominiums for each single uh, homeless person. You know, I see this on the news where we have to spend millions and millions of dollars to, to save the homeless people. And, and it drives me nuts because it's dishonest. You know, we're not getting to the real problem. The real problem of homelessness. I know that's a completely different show right there, but what's the problem with homelessness? And I, I think it is, um, is drugs and alcohol. I mean, we have the unfortunate single mother whose you know, husband's passed away and she's down on her luck. I get that. But we're not getting to the root of the problem. It's people who don't want to uh, blend and work within society. It's people who, it's alcohol, it's uh, mental problems. These are the problems that we're having right now. <laughs> so, I'll, so I'll take the counterpoint to that. Okay. Uh, and, and, I, and I guess I'll say that I do believe that that's a uh, percentage of the population, but mm -hmm. I, I don't think so. I think, I think uh, people are being driven out of their homes because uh, property taxes are going up through the roof. I believe, uh, I believe that, um, you know, frankly, I believe that there's a lot of government employees that are using the power of their office to take houses from people. I think uh, I've seen some of these places, uh, you know, down in, in, in Alameda County and, and uh, uh, you know, I, I just I just couldn't believe, you know, the thousands of people, you know, that are, you know, I guess it's a skid row of sorts, you know, just outside of Berkeley, outside of Oakland. And I've seen it and, and you know, and they'll they'll flush them out from time to time. So so, you know, you'll see it in an encampment of 70 or so tents and then all of a sudden they'll push them out and they'll move them wherever they're going. But uh, L.A. is it's just supposed to be just absolutely massive. I mean, I, when I was driving on the road there one time, you know, on the 101, there's a guy who's just on the side of the hill. I mean, he just he just plopped up a tent right there, you know, right mm -hmm. underneath it underpass and, and uh... well I think this is where we have an issue I think Jason is correct traditionally the Jason's version of, of homelessness is large is a large percentage but recently things have changed I know in my neighborhood they've taken they closed a whole bunch of the low low-end motels they, they said they were causing blight and so they've closed a bunch of mm -hmm. low-end motels and so now all the people who used to live in those low-end motels are now living on the street they yeah. got their tents propped up on against the side the fences of the closed motels on the street and so you've actually created more blight yeah. trying to solve blight and you've made home people who were homeless who were who are who are already in a dire circumstances and you've actually made it worse yeah but, but i gotta say this if you're an able-bodied sane person and you can't afford to live in an area then you move but you can't afford to move it's in California. You literally can't. You, you need you need money well, to yeah, 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 yeah. move to Nevada, Nebraska, Arizona. Because Nebraska. here's the deal: when uh, I lived in Walnut Creek in a one bedroom, one bath condo with my wife, girlfriend, and then wife, and then we had a kid. I wanted more space, but at the time I couldn't afford more space in Walnut Creek. So you know what I did? I looked for houses further out in Solano County. I looked in Sassoon, Fairfield, and I ended up in Vacaville. I could afford Vacaville, so I got my ass up. And I moved somewhere where it's cheaper. Yeah. It's not that freaking hard. I don't understand why people feel like, well, I lived here before, I can't afford it now, so I'm just going to be homeless and someone has to take care of me. Yeah. That well, sounds ridiculous. The, the only thing I'm gonna I, I would I would just counter by saying, and I'm I'm not gonna say anything that you said was unreasonable. I I, I would like one day and I I've, I've got a friend of mine I've talked to about doing this and is to go out to these encampments and talk to the people and actually, mm -hmm. you know, what's your story? Because I'm kind of interested. I mean, we, we, we see it from afar and you know, you were talking about social media, which is, you know, we're told one thing, so you know, who says this? New York Times, right? So right. okay, you know, and, and how many people are out there? You know, there's there's tens of thousands of people in this situation and you know I, I i don't know i think it's worth you know it is dire yeah no doubt but i'd like to know how they got there i'd like to talk to more of these people get a right. sampling of what why they're there and obviously I'm, I'm not gonna i'm sorry new york times i'm sorry new york times you know you've got the you know you know and i'm not even sure where your reputation is you know and whoever you are but <laughs> right and, well, and one, one term that really drives me nuts is the term homeless because there's so many varying degrees oh of yeah, homeless. yeah. There, are, there are people who are homeless uh, bad situations there are people who are homeless because they screwed up their lives and I yeah. want to and trust me I'm compassionate about this I want to help them out but there are limitations yeah well, you know. well there's also people who are in the past would have been a mountain man they would have been out yeah, trapping yeah. And, right. and they can't function in, well, in a complicated but, society but, and so we have to figure out what to do with those guys. in this day and age there's no uh, it used to be the uh, the cities cities in the East Coast were built with a common a common area in the middle like the Boston common right and you know 
if you didn't have the ability to afford a house, you know, you had a tent in these common areas. You don't have that right anymore. You know, if you don't have a house, you're homeless. You know, and 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 if you're if you're somewhere that you're not supposed to be, you're trespassing. So I mean, in essence, you're making them illegal from that standpoint. So I I, I have a lot. You know, I mean, I mean, so fine. You know, give somebody you know their own corner and make you know, but we can't let them do that either. Yeah, so. It's an insanely complicated issue, and I think that's part of the problem is we don't have it as a complicated issue, and so we actually have to start having this the the, the question about the wide diversity that home. Actually well, well the big question is, uh, okay, California homes camp among the most dire places in the world. Why is it California? That's a b another big question. Yeah. Why, why California? Well, we're not hearing about, you know, we're not hearing about New Jersey's dire homeless problem. You know? Right. Yeah. So there's policies in place that are setting the, up this yes, haven this for happen. homelessness. Yeah. Yes. Well, we're, yeah, also, we're, we're also creating it. But actually, we've got a couple minutes left. California's budget system overhaul would cost a billion dollars to to change the system that actually manages the budget process. Just to, to modernize the system, cost a billion dollars so we could actually manage our budget. Well, uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a stab at this and say I'm not, I, I'm not even sure if I believe that. You know, so they're gonna tell me that they're putting their accounting uh, uh, program in a place that's gonna cost a billion dollars, and I'm gonna say, I think they found a guy who wants a billion dollars. <laughs> well, actually, they're not gonna do it. Is it? <laughs> they're going, it's gonna cost a billion dollars, so we're not gonna do it. But yeah, you think, you think they could call up Google or Apple or somebody and say, hey, how much would you charge us to kind of modernize yeah. this thing? Yeah, well, they, a couple years ago, what they did was, uh, I, I wanna say it was uh, 2007 or thereabouts, they did an upgrade on the court system. And, and I forget, it was another one of those billion dollar things and they mm -hmm. spent the money. And you know what we got out of it? Next to squat. And somebody made the point that, you know, uh, the federal government has a system, uh, computer system in place called PACER. We can just copy that. We don't have to make our own. They said, nope, you had to do your own. And all the, mo all the money just disappears. You know, and so so when I see these billion dollar, I mean, it's all in California. It's always a billion dollars. You know, uh, yeah, we had a odd. billion billion dollar shortfall, right? You know, right. In the, the parks department. We didn't have enough money, and then and then they put out the half sale half cent sales tax, and then all of a sudden they found, hey, we had a billion dollars in account. We forgot about. You know, <laughs> it's always a billion dollars for this or a billion dollars for that. And every time I think it's a billion dollars, one, I know that billion dollars has been stolen. Two, there's another person looking for that billion dollars, and three, we're paying for it. <laughs> so. Well, I think in this particular case, it was this billion dollars was they didn't want to actually do it. I think they claimed it was going to cost a billion dollars so they can make it as an excuse so we don't actually have to upgrade the system because so, that way so, it's so then the next thing, next thing is what are they trying to hide? I bet you that's the next the other side of it because uh, I don't know. My, I, I don't know. I mean, well, cause, well, to modernize it, then you could transparency, right? I, if I, modernization I, would create transparency and they, we know this California government hates transparency. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I think I think again, we're we're a sinking ship right now. I think uh, financially, we're in the toilet, and I think that they've got to do whatever they can to either get right. more money or cover up for what they've done. So. Well, and that's about all the time we have. I'd like to thank our guests, Michael and Jason, for for appearing. If you would like more information on Michael, you can go to oh, Michael. What's that website? Soj51.com. Thank you very much. For more information on our topics we discuss, you can go to libertariancounterpoint.com. If you're watching us on YouTube, please hit the like, subscribe, and the sub notification button. You can start looking for us on your favorite social media platform. And from all of us here at Libertarian Counterpoint, thank you for watching and please remember, love everybody.